Taliban declares we will stone women to death in public. In Afghanistan, in a chilling declaration confirming the Taliban's return to their notoriously oppressive policies against women, Afghanistan's reclusive supreme leader, Mullah uh, Hubatullah Ahunzada, vowed in a voice message aired on state television to reinstate barbaric punishments like public stonings and floggings, brazenly telling the West, quote, you say it's a violation of women's rights when we stone them to death, but we will soon implement the punishment for adultery. We will flog women in public. We will stone them to death in public. The Taliban leader, who has almost no digital footprint and has never been seen in public aside from old portraits, defiantly stated, quote, these are all against your democracy, but we will continue doing it. We fought against you for 20 years, and we will fight 20 and even more years against you. As he emphasized the need for resilience in opposing women's rights among Taliban soldiers. Ahunzada's harrowing remarks enraged many Afghans, with one woman named Tala lamenting from Kabul, quote, we, the women, are living in a prison, and the Taliban makes it smaller for us every passing day, criticizing how, quote, the money that they receive from the international community as humanitarian aid is just feeding them against women. The Supreme Leader's defiant vow confirms fears of a reversal of human rights in Afghanistan under Taliban rule following the U.S. withdrawal, withdrawal in 2021. Oh, my God. So we already know that things have been getting really bad in Afghanistan since the U.S. withdrawal, since the NATO withdrawal. And there was some pretense for a few years that this, like, they, 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 for a while, they were like, oh, no, we're not going to go back to how it was, like, in the 90s. No, we're not going to do that. We're more moderate this time. We're not going to be so harsh, blah, 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 blah. Well, over the past several years, I think they have basically been testing the waters of seeing the international community's reaction as they strip women from higher education, from being doctors, from going to parks, from going out and attending, you know, just like chipping away, chipping away, going to public baths, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away until they're like, okay, yeah, no, let's just go full tilt. Let's just set, just send it. Let's just do it. Because they have basically seen like, not really much of a reaction from the international community and the international community continues to give like civilian aid like they're still like life supporting them and now this is the result i mean armin what do you think about this i mean there's no alternative the like people like the international community needs to do this and that the greatest military power on the in the universe, unless there's aliens out there, I don't know. I, I, I mean, unless in this solar system, wasn't able to remove Taliban from Afghanistan. So when people are asking for international community intervention, what are they talking about? What force are they talking about? The U.S. military, the hegemony of the Taliban in Afghanistan is so strong that after a decade of trying to remove them with the greatest military power on earth, they were not removed. So who are you at? If that was not able to come and remove them, who are you asking? Who are you asking to come and do this? Well, not to I mean, mention the entire time that the U S had an intervention in Afghanistan, there were, right. in, there was giant international pressure for them to, re to, to leave and be removed because right of the nature of U.S. intervention in Afghanistan, which led to a high amount of civilian casualties. So I'm not even right. saying that that pressure is completely unjustified, right? But it, it, I'm going to be honest, I get very confused and kind of a sense of like whiplash when people are... It's like 
am I misremembering how everyone wanted the U.S. to leave? And then they left, and then now everyone is blaming us for this. I mean, the nature of the withdrawal was an unmitigated disaster. I'm not going to make in, mince any words about that. Not to mention the sheer amount of our allies that we abandoned and left to be tortured and killed, which is a freaking shame upon our country that we still carry out to this day because we're still leaving people behind. I have like no false pretenses about this, right? But sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Okay. And also people are saying, uh, oh, remove aid. I mean, you that makes it worse. Like the number of people who are being stoned to death is significantly less than the number of people who would be starved to death if you stop the aid. Already so like, starving oh, to death. Already yeah, selling, like, oh, these, selling their children to be child brides, selling their sons into indentured servitude. Yeah, but if you are sorry for these women who are being stoned, as you should be, you should be more sorry for the number of women who would be starved to death if the aid doesn't get there. Right, it's just a numbers thing. There's more people that will suffer, so it's not like what with people are like. Oh, what what why is the international community not doing enough? What should they do? How can you pressure people who don't fear death? Like what? Tell me the leverage that you have here against the Taliban. You have no leverage. These these people were depressed because they weren't because the war is over and they weren't dying. What, how could you pressure people? How could you pressure people with that mentality? You have nothing against them. I, I actually, I don't blame the international community. A lot of people are like, oh, the international community should do more. I actually support the international. There's nothing. That, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing. Tell me if you have an idea. Tell me what it is because I can't. Uh, there's nothing here. People could talk about it more. People could. At least pretend to care and talk about it more because I feel like a lot of Afghan activists like literally feel like it gets no attention. Like at least with Iran, like the activists like in Iran get a like a smidge of attention. Like no Do one you know pays why attention to Afghanistan. Do you know what? why? Because well, more because people in Afghanistan want the diaspora to organize. Let me say. Let me finish Sorry. that sentence. Because more people in Afghanistan want Sharia. You might, this is something unpo unpopular to say, okay? We hear a lot of voices from Afghanistan coming and saying like, oh, this is bad, this is bad, women should be free, Come feminists from Afghanistan asking for women rights. You don't hear the other side, unfortunately. Do you agree with this, Susanna? Like, we hear the stories of the people in Afghanistan that are upset with the Taliban being in power, but unfortunately, I have news for you. There is a huge people in Afghanistan that want exactly this. And I know this is hard to hear, but that's the case. That's the difference between Iran and, Afgh in Ir Iran and Afghanistan. Most people in Iran don't want Sharia. Most people in Afghanistan do want Sharia. That's the difference between Afghanistan and Iran. Yeah. It, it's... It's so devastating. It's so devastating on like an emotional level. Yeah. Right. Especially because like we have, you know, like that ISIS K bombing that happened at the, um, at the airport during the withdrawal. Like we have atheist Republic members in Afghanistan that survived that bombing. You know, like I've helped members of our community escape afghanistan um and oh god that was such a horrible time there were dozens and dozens and dozens of atheist afghans messaging anyone that they could get their hands on emailing them photos of oh we had like a secular book club and here's a photo of every single member's uh, bodies in a pile because they came and killed all of us and you need to help me leave just messaging anyone that they even remotely think can help it was it was beyond uh, 
So I just have to try to focus on the people that we could help. Um, yeah, actually, that's a that's a that's a good way to look at it. This instead of it's not all or none. Okay, it's not. Can we save the entirety of Afghanistan? Guess what? No, you can't. Or should we just let the situation be? No, there's some things. Maybe there's a lot of things in between that you could do. Don't have this is basically an all or nothing kind of a black and white fallacy. If you think like, oh, but just because we can't save the entirety of Afghanistan, you wash your hands off of it and move away. There are individuals that you could help. Focus on something in between, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, it's the only thing you can do. It's like the story of the person. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a fable we have where we say that they're on a beach and it's filled with starfish and there's like a boy trying to throw all the starfish back into the sea so they don't bake in the sun and die. And a man comes up to him and is going like, oh, well, why are you doing that? Like all these other, it's pointless. Like all these starfish are going to die. You can't help all of them. And the boy is like, oh, well. To the one that I did help, like throw back into the water, like it matters to him, you know. Um, and so I don't know. I just this this is again one of those moments where I'm like, why? And I get so furious. I get so furious. People are like, just the the amount of gaslighting that it comes to this ideology and i'm like when you have these people telling you no we want sharia and we want to stone women to death in public and this is our contribution to the world in the 21st century why don't people believe them when they say that They seem to like not believe them when they say that. Like, oh no, you don't really want that. Like, oh no, it's no, this actually is really peaceful. You just completely misunderstood it. It drives me insane. It drives me insane. Like, no normal mind functioning person is supposed to draw any sort of connections or find any sort of power excuse me, pattern between the thousands and thousands of attacks and civilians killed and people tortured and people executed all around the world, across like damn near every country in the world with, with this religion or this ideology. You're really telling me that we are not supposed to find any sort of pattern or connection or like motivating factor from this idea in this book and the way people act. Hmm. Oh, but no, all of these people across decades, across centuries are all interpreting this super peaceful thing the wrong way. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And yes, it is technically, it's a minority, but it's a larger minority of the people following this idea than the extremists that are a minority of people following other ideas. You know, that, that group of that fringe is a lot bigger and a lot more dangerous than the fringe of other groups. And none of us are supposed to notice a pattern. None of us are supposed to talk about it. None of us are supposed to acknowledge it. None of us are supposed to believe these people when they say what they mean, when they say what they want, because it's like so horrific. We can't even believe that people actually want that, that people actually hate freedom, that they hate human rights. Even when they literally say that to our face, including like people like Ali Dawa, literally living in the heart of London. None of us are supposed to like actually believe them or acknowledge it or talk about it. I'm I can't even deal with it anymore. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Mm -hmm. Um we oh, and actually that brings us to a comment from Dolly. Hi Dolly, I love you. Um, who raised a good point yeah. saying, Is there any other opponent against the Taliban that can take over? And the answer is yes, it's ISIS K. 
maybe not take over, but they're a huge thorn in their side. And actually, I think yeah, I'm no over. expert. I'm no expert, but I would imagine that part of the motivation for bringing back this punishment is that they have to compete with ISIS-K in terms of ideology. Because ISIS-K basically takfirs the Taliban yeah. as a group that is not properly universalist in their idea of, of an Islamic caliphate. Okay, but the, the actual opponents to the Taliban... So the ISIS-K is just going to be able to do terrorist attacks against the Taliban, but it's not going to even be remotely close to an actual opponent. Um, the, the group that a lot of people consider supporting against the Taliban is called the Northern Alliance, but their resources are very, very small. They're not even remotely close to what is needed to even make a dent. So, yeah, no. The thing is that the reason why there's no such opponent, Dali, is because the Taliban represents the net. It's a it's a natural reflection of what the people of Afghanistan's mindsets are. That's why it's hard to remove it. That's why the military didn't fight back because when the Taliban was taking over, because they understood that these people are naturally who should be who would be in charge given where afghanistan is right at right at, is at right now the, it's the problem is the mindset so if you're looking for a solution so here's the thing in iran the government of iran is not a reflection of the mindset of the people there the average mindset of the people there right that's why it's an unnatural government it doesn't fit the people there's a gap between the people and the government in afghanistan the taliban is actual a genuine accurate representation of the average mindset in afghanistan so if you want to if you give them any other government you're basically putting something that it doesn't fit on on the population so if you want to fix afghanistan you have to fi fix a mindset and that takes a long time it takes a lot of education you need access to their children you need you need a lot of longer term planning and investments. It's not easy. And none of that is possible right now because of the sheer amount of instability and they cut off and destroyed like most of those institutions. And it's so crazy to think about how quickly Afghanistan went back like hundreds of years. When right. you look at how things were in the 50s, of communism. they were because modernizing communism. like on a speed track. By the way, it's very interesting that Islamism took over Iran and Afghanistan because of communism. Yeah, so let's not forget. Afghanistan, Afghanistan was working out. Afghanistan was working, was progressing rapidly, unbelievably rapidly. So was Iran. Okay, both Afghanistan and Iran were broken apart by communism, and then communists destroyed themselves, and then through those ashes, Islam Islamism rose. So it was communism that gifted both Afghanistan and Iran to Islamism. Yeah. And let's not forget that we have thousands of people in Afghanistan who would do anything in the world to leave. They're still looking every day for a way to leave. Our allies that we left behind abandoned to the worst fates. I still can't get over it. Um, right. Like, so recently I went to a Nauru celebration at my local city hall. And there were a lot of Iranians there, but then there was also a huge amount of Afghans there at the um, at, at the City Hall Nuruz celebration. Because for people that don't know, like Nuruz is celebrated in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, like as far as Turkey, you know, Kurdistan. Um, and there are all these like little kids running around and I, I can tell they're Afghan because the way they're dressing and their their appearance and um I was just thinking about like how I'm so happy that they get to go to school.
and they're safe here. No matter how much they had to give up. Yeah. So, you know, while we do have to be honest about what is the, the polling numbers, right? About who, what the attitudes are. Like, I don't want people to forget that there are, you know, probably tens of thousands of people that would give anything to have their country back. And how many people had their dreams and lives destroyed beyond all recognition. Um, I would really encourage people to go watch the movie that I saw in theater called The Last Birthday. And um, it's a it's a it's a dramatized movie about the last birthday that this group of women had before the Taliban took over. And um, I think it really brings home like the the the, the grief and the loss of what so many people were trying to build out of the, the wreckage of their country and what they lost. So go check out that movie, The Last Birthday. Um, you know what? I know we are running out of time, so I'll just say this quickly. You know what What got me the most was the, the, the day that all, a lot of girls were lining up to go to school and they thought that they're going to go back to school, but the Taliban canceled it. And on the very day, and all these girls came back home crying. There were so many videos coming out of Afghanistan flooding. I've never seen so many children, girls, all of them, crying about school being canceled. I've never seen so many children so eager to go to school, like their lives depended on it, and it did. Everywhere else, I'm like, children would be happy that school was canceled. These kids were devastated because they thought they were finally going back to school. And back, you know, Taliban was taking that away for, with, I don't know, I think the excuse was, oh, we didn't agree on the dress code. It was but the that hijab. Was a couple of years, the hijab. But now, it's, that was a long time ago. Even till this day, they're still not back in school. I don't think like there were so many videos of the parents the girls coming they were crying they had their books and that was devastating and that's a comp you can't make this back you know the loss of opportunity the loss of income the lot the, the hit to the economy of a half of your population not getting educated at the country that is this this with this level of poverty the most important research every country has is this is human resource and not investing in half of that, that's like, there's no, it's more than half of that. Because I was reading that it's, it's, it's incalculable. And it, I want to be honest, it's more than half of it because I read an article recently about how the education for boys is a freaking joke. Like this is really, this is, this is more than half the population. This is, this is everyone. Um, I don't know if it helps make people feel any better when the americans when nato withdrew and um we had a bunch of atheist republic members reaching out to us trying to escape um i connected one of our um atheist republic members from i think he was from jalalabad and um with some resources and i wrote a letter of recommendation for him and connected him to some people who are really you know going to be the experts on ha helping him evacuate and um, I can report the good news that, um, well, I won't say where they live, but him and his wife and his two children um, are safe and um, they managed to escape. And um, I remember him posting on Facebook photos of his daughter attending like first grade. Mm. And it just made me so happy to think about how his daughter gets to learn and be safe. So, you know, it matters to, it matters a lot to the people we can't help. Thank you. 
All right. Do you want to read some of the stuff that you highlighted or? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Scoop Dog is YouTube. saying, hit the like, please, folks. Yes, guys, please don't forget to like. And if you're watching us on Twitter right now, make sure to come over to YouTube at Atheist Republic and uh, engage with us in the live chat. Because, you know, on Twitter, you, you can't tell us what you think. <laughs> um, and uh, Shami is saying, the silence of the Muslim women who try convincing the world that Islam powers us on subjects like these is bloody embarrassing. The gaslighting is insane. Um, Danny, I don't know how to say this last name. Just Danny is saying, I hope the Atheist Republic keeps growing and gets the resources to help atheists around the world get out of abusive and dangerous situations. Yes, same. This is a dream of mine to really build out more wraparound services for people who are persecuted and need to escape. Um we we do the best that we can for the people that reach out to us for help and i um you know do kind of some i i help them as much as i can in my my free time um but i do really want to build this out because it's so important and there really is a, a extreme lack of these resources in comparison to you know like persecuted christians or something um Erkin gave us a super chat. Thank you, my friend. Saying, in Turkey, we have the worst of both worlds. Our government's view only satisfies one half and is wildly opposite to the other halves. Um, well, I mean, I don't want you to take for granted your security that you have in Turkey. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.